Welcome to Metal Bend Chronicles. Coming at you from the Metal Bend Mobile, where metal is blasting and metal lives. That's right, man. Um, well, we're going to talk about an album that came out 40 years ago. It just had its 40th anniversary, actually. You know, and the reason why I'm talking about this album, because it was the very first album I ever heard from this band way back in 1988, when I was starting to really get into, you know, the more heavier sides of metal, I guess you could say, you know, with the Metallicas, the Anthraxes, the Metal Churches, the Halloweens. And Iron Maiden was one of those early bands that got me into this music. And the album we're obviously talking about is the 1983 album, Peace of Mind, which came out on Capital EMI on May 16th of 1983, produced by Martin Birch. This would have been the very first album, too, to feature Nico McBrain on drums. Of course, Nico McBrain, I believe, was a drum tech, you know, at the time for Iron Maiden. He was either a drum tech or he... I think he might have dressed up as Eddie in one of the early Iron Maiden videos. I kind of forget now. But anyways, Nico McBrain is the new drummer. And obviously, Nico McBrain came from Trust and Pat and the Pat Travelers Band. Yes, so that's basically Nico McBrain's background. Replacing Clyde Burr, obviously, who had left the band. So this album, man, quintessentially... It might be a it might be a tad different compared to number of the beast I mean there's elements on this album you can definitely hear that would definitely foresee where maiden was going to go into the future and I'll get to that here in a minute but right away we open up with where Eagles dare now this really showcases Nico McBrain's drum work new guy in the band you know and I got to say, he's doing some very technical style drumming on this track. And it's weird because he's only using a single bass drum kit. And it sounds like he's using a double kick, which he's not, which is pretty dang impressive. So yeah, the stuff Nico's doing on this track is absolutely impressive. To me, this is probably one of the heaviest Iron Maiden tracks too. Like, at least that's the vibe I get. To me, it's a pretty heavy track for Iron Maiden, you know. Definitely more on that, like, just pure new wave of British heavy metal sound, you know. All in all, it's a very good way to begin this album. Very epic sounding, too. Just a killer, killer, killer track. One of my favorite Maiden tracks. I know it's been covered by a few people. I'm trying to think. I know Fozzie covered it. And Deliverance did a cover of Where Eagles Stare on their Hear What I Say album. So yeah, man, which they do a really cool cover verse and too. There's other bands that did this as a cover too. I'm trying to think. I think a band called Ein Vain did a cover of this. You know, I think Still Profit even covered this. Either or. Great, great, great song. And definitely a good way to introduce Nico McBrain into the band. So then we get into Revelation. Now this track's a little longer, a little more melodic. You know, it's weird. It kind of begins with these stop-start riffs, you know, that you would kind of hear in a band like the Scorpions with the dan it dan it dan it or a band like ACDC, you know, you hear those kind of riffs. And I would say that's quite different for Iron Maiden, you know. Now, this track's really good. I mean... The melodic stuff in this track is absolutely impressive. Um, again, a lengthier track. It does speed up in parts, too. Oh, no, I think this track's very good. Then we get into Flight of Icarus. Wow. Now, this track, I guess back in the day, Steve Harris hated playing this song live because he thought the song was way too commercial sounding. I mean, I guess in a way, I kind of get it. It, it does... It is a little more simple and more, um, maybe it does kind of have that vibe that it's kind of written for radio, whether that's intentional or not, who knows. 
but this track to me is very good you know it's, yeah it's one of the more simple tracks on the album but i really enjoy it um actually fate's warning did a cover of this very early on it was a rehearsal cover so the sound quality is not great and this would have been recorded around 83 with john arts on vocals so yeah they did a cover of it anyways i think this is a cool track you know yeah, I really like it. I think it's got a really cool chorus. You know, it's got a pretty cool video, too. So then we get into Die With Your Boots On. Now, this track definitely picks the tempo up. Probably, as I'm sitting here thinking right now, this is probably the fastest track on the album. It is fast-paced. It is definitely quite upbeat. But, man, I absolutely adore this track. I think it's one of Maiden's best tracks. You know, you get some great harmony guitar leads on this track. I mean, it's just great stuff. The Trooper, I really don't have to talk about this track. Everybody knows this track. Obviously, The Trooper is the most well-known track on the record, but it's got that iconic beginning. You know, it's got that ripped beginning, which is very iconic. You know, this is a good track still. I mean... Yeah, I don't have to hear it all the time these days, but, you know, when I listen, when, I, when it comes on, I'll listen to it, obviously. And it's still one of the best Iron Maiden tracks, even if it does kind of suffer from burnout, you know, at times. But all in all, I think The Trooper is still a pretty good song. It's still, you know, obviously they still have it in their live sets. I don't think it's ever left their live set, to be honest. But here's where the album, here's where we get into the deep cuts of the album. Starting with track number six with still life and this is basically a predecessor to what you would hear a lot of and to this day still hear a lot of believe me probably way too much at this point where steve harris is doing these melodic drawn out bass intros you know and that's pretty much this has to be one of the first Iron Maiden tracks to have this. Where Steve Harris is playing this, you know, melodic bass intro, you know, with some, you know, with like an atmosphere behind it, you know. And this is, like I said, this is what you hear a lot of now. Like I said, I think it's overdone to death because it's like every Iron Maiden track that comes out now has a melodic bass intro. And over time, they've, they've just gotten extended way too long, in my opinion. But this is a pretty darn good example. You know, this one's actually good. It's listenable. It's not, it doesn't overstay its welcome. All in all, though, I honestly think this is one of the best tracks on the album. Yes, it's a deep cut. I don't even know if this track's ever been played live. Maybe early on it was played live. But yeah, it's one of them tracks that's pretty much forget. You know, it's pretty much forgotten about for the most part. All in all, it's a very enjoyable track. It's got a really cool chorus, you know. And I think it's got some excellent lead guitar work. Yeah, I think it's a pretty underrated track on this record. All right, so now we come to Quest for Fire. Okay, the track a lot of people would say is the worst track on the album. And I understand why people say that. And I tend to probably agree because it is the worst track on this album. I mean, the lyrics are very cheesy. <laughs> I mean, come on, this track's about dinosaurs, for God's sakes, for the most part. And, yeah, man, lyrically, it's not a great song. Musically, however, it's not that bad. I, I never really skip it if I'm listening to Peace of Mind, so, you know. It is what it is. It's not one of the better tracks, though. Anyways, moving on to another very underrated track on this record. Man, I'm talking about Sun and Still. This track's freaking... It's very underrated. It's, it's an excellent deep cut. It's like an excellent deep cut and an excellent dive into a track that doesn't get talked about or mentioned at all, hardly. You know... And it's got a really cool gallop to it, you know. And I really love the harmony guitar section on this track. It's absolutely cool. So, yeah, I think this track is very underrated. I think people should go back and listen to it if they skip over it when they're listening to the album. Yeah. Really good track, in my opinion. 
Anyways, so then we get into the final track, the epic of the album, To Tame a Land, which I believe was originally going to be called Dunn. Correct me if I'm wrong. I mean, I could be wrong about this, too. Either or, you know, To Tame a Land, this one, in a way, is kind of a predecessor to what you would hear on the next album, Power Sleep. It's got a very Egyptian-esque vibe to it. You know, you can really feel that Egyptian influence in this track musically, you know, and you would hear a lot of this on the next record, Power Slave. So yeah, this is definitely a predecessor of what's to come on the next album. But no, this track's absolutely incredible. You know, it's got some cool fast sections. The harmony guitar solo at the end of this track is absolutely incredible. It's dark and it's just optim you know, it's really, really good and I enjoy it. Oh no. So this album, 40 years later, does it still hold up? Obviously it does. It's a legendary, highly influential album. And it's a part of that first five big albums when it comes to Iron Maiden. So yes, to me, I would give the album probably a 9 out of 10. It's not my favorite of the early albums, but it's still a darn good album. See, so yeah, a 9 out of 10 for... Peace of mind. Happy 40th anniversary to this album. I know it's been five days now, but anyways. That's my review of Iron Maiden's Peace of Mind. All right, guys. Keep it metal and keep it real.